Hi, and welcome back once again. Now we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects for two reasons. One, who doesn't like a good night's sleep? And the second is that I find it absolutely fascinating that only in the last five or ten years has science really understood uh, more of the reasoning for sleep. In the past, we thought we just slept because we were tired. But there are so many bodily functions and bodily processes that are all dependent on quality sleep, rhythmic sleep, recuperative sleep. And your memory and your ability to master things in life is greatly dependent on this. Optimal sleep will enhance learning and memory as much as anything else you will learn in the matrix mind. If you don't get quality sleep, you cannot learn. It is that simple. So how much sleep do you need? I'm sure you've heard people say, well, I can get by on three hours or four hours or five hours. And there are exceptions. There are a few. But still, people who have the strongest immune system, who function the best, who have the best normal existence. And when I mean normal, I mean that they have strong immune systems. They can exercise without being overly exhausted. They recover well. They're not tired and cranky. They're not so tired that they can't have an intimate life. That means they have enough sleep if they're able to do all the things that they want to do. The average human needs 8.3 hours a night. The actual average is 6.9 hours. That's from the National Sleep Foundation. That's a deficit of 1 hour and 24 minutes a night. That's unacceptable. 20% of people sleep less than 6 hours a night. So here are some symptoms of inadequate sleep. Slow reactions, listlessness, headaches, respiratory illness, increased hunger, aches and pains, all thumbs, basically you're a klutz. Chills, mood swings, memory loss, decision-making problems, short attention span, anxiety attacks, inability to cope, and uncreative. Have you ever been or experienced any of these things? When I am training in martial arts, my balance gets thrown off when I didn't get enough sleep. And so normally something I'd be able to you know, balance on one foot or kick and still be able to maintain my balance or whatever it is, I tip over <laughs> essentially because I have an inability to manage my balance, my proprioception uh, because of the lack of sleep. And then if you're trying to learn new techniques in whatever sport of choice you have, uh, the, your memory will be diminished. So, and, and this goes for uh, academics or in, uh, it's hurtful in relationships and all sorts of things. Long-term effects of poor sleep, increased cancer risk, diabetes risk, hypertension, that's high blood pressure, obesity and weight gain. Can you see how hypertension, diabetes and obesity uh, and stroke are all interlinked aside from their correlation as it pertains to poor sleep. Arrhythmias, that's an irregular heartbeat. Premature aging. So maybe the answer isn't in the spa, but it's in the bedroom instead to living a long life and looking youthful. Stimulant abuse. Starbucks is thriving because aside from they have good tasting coffee, that is one thing. However, a lot of it is simply because America doesn't get enough sleep and they feel and perhaps have conditioned themselves to need that stimulant because of the lack of, of quality sleep. But the solution is better sleep and less coffee. And of course, your, your long-term uh, memory and your short-term memory will be affected, but in the long-term, memory as a whole will be affected uh, for everything that you do and everything that you want to remember if you do not get quality sleep. And then depression as well because you don't get the right chemical signal, signals uh, to your brain and you have an inability uh, to lift your spirits uh, in many cases if you do not get enough sleep. So sleep disruption worsens disease. And the big reason is it because it suppresses immune function. Your body repairs itself when it sleeps. And if you don't get enough sleep, there is not enough repair. And if you don't maintain any structure, if it's a building, if it's a car, if it's an antique, it doesn't matter. 
you have to maintain it and the only way to maintain it is through constant consistent care and repair and that only happens during sleep so if you're not getting enough sleep all these things will be exacerbated your body goes through what's called a circadian rhythm circa means about and dian comes from the root day so about a day you have about a hundred different rhythms in your body temperature fluxes, fluxes uh, chemicals um, uh, alertness brainwave activity and so on that happen on uh, cycles called the circadian rhythms well what happens is your body also goes through temperature changes as part of the circadian rhythms and it declines during the night. If you look at the chart here, you can see how the, the temperature, your core temperature, declines during the night. And if you think about a warm summer night and how it's difficult to sleep sometimes, it's because it makes it more difficult for your body to decrease in core temperature so it can't start the cascade of hormonal changes, which allows you to sleep well. And then during the day, we have a, a little bit of a dip in temperature. But here's the thing. If, and your body wants to take that dip as night progresses because it allows for deeper sleep. But if you sleep too much during the day, too long of a nap, it confuses the body and the temperature can drop a little bit. And then it, because it's a, a daily rhythm, it doesn't think it needs to dip again for another day. And so it makes it a little more difficult to sleep at night. So if you are going to nap during the day, some recent studies show a nap should be as short as eight minutes. But as we get into this program and you learn about you know, visualization and meditation and self-hypnosis and all the different things like that, you will be able to do those practices in lieu of a nap and still feel rested and recovered and have no ill effect on your circadian rhythms. 16 hours awake produces eight hours of sleep. So it builds up this, this uh, tendency or need for sleep builds up throughout the day. But naps decrease your ability to sleep at night unless it's very short in duration. Now if you're ill or you just had a medical procedure or something of that nature, then of course there are always exceptions to this where you may need more sleep throughout the day. However, for the most part, the answer to how do I get a good night's sleep, it is a good day's awake. Getting up early, having carbs, protein, and fiber in the morning. Do not abuse stimulants. Exercise earlier in the day when possible. Then allow yourself to easily transition into a slower pace and dimmer lights as the day progresses, and you'll be able to sleep even better. There actually is an optimal temperature and relative humidity for sleeping. Everyone's a little different. It is not an absolute, and there is some disagreement ab um, among scientific researchers in sleep as to what is optimal. But fundamentally, it's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit and 65% relative humidity. These, this is the temperature and humidity which allows your body to get the best sleep possible. Now, if you have four blankets on you, uh, you know, that's going to change things a little bit, but the relative humidity of the room and your sleep environment, 65 degrees, 65% humidity. And you have to experiment a little bit and see what works best. But this is why it's difficult to sleep uh, when it is warm during summer months. It's all about the hormones. Growth hormones. This is released by the pituitary gland in the center of your head. And you only release the most growth hormone when you're in the deepest levels of sleep. And if you don't do these things that we're talking about now, you will never get to those deepest levels of sleep. Growth hormone is released episodically about every 45 minutes throughout the day, but most of it is released during the deepest levels of sleep. So if you never get there, you never release growth hormone. Growth hormone is responsible for lean muscle, and the management of body fat. So those are two important things to your overall health, and that's why growth hormone is important. Melatonin. Melatonin is naturally secreted by the body, by the pineal gland, and it helps those with metastatic cancer. It improves immunity. 
Now it is naturally occurring, but you can take it in supplemental dose if you choose. And this dosage requirement or recommendation came from Dr. Andrew Weil, a man I respect a great deal. And so it's 0.3 milligrams if used regularly or 2.5 to 3 milligrams for short durations. So again, you can, melatonin always is secreted naturally. However, you secrete more when you're younger and less when you get older. Babies sleep more, older people tend to sleep less. They're, they're up at the crack of dawn. And a lot of this is related to the amount of melatonin they have in their system. The only possible side effect that I'm aware of and that I've researched with melatonin is that sometimes people have nightmares. And I've only met one person ever at a seminar I had conducted that actually had these nightmares from melatonin. And they just quit taking the melatonin and the nightmares went away. For some people, they don't get nightmares, but they have enhanced dreaming. And that is simply as likely because they were just at a deeper level of sleep where dreaming occurs. And beta blockers, blood pressure medicine, and NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, suppress natural melatonin production. So if you are taking either of those medications or you know someone who's having a hard time sleeping, this might be part of the reason. So I am not a medical doctor, and unless you are, uh, you cannot tell them to do that, but what you can do is have them do the research and bring that research to their doctor and see if they can use some other things like uh, uh, GABA, valerian root, uh, chamomile tea, tea and uh, melatonin. Now, ghrelin, this is a hormone in your body. It's released primarily by the stomach. It stimulates appetite. So if you don't get enough sleep, you produce more ghrelin. And then you're hungrier. Lack of sleep increases ghrelin secretion. So it's not that you're hungry, it's just that you are tired and you think you need to eat to give you more energy. This is your body's way of trying to help you out, but ultimately it can lead to unwanted weight gain. Leptin is a protein of 167 amino acids. It is manufactured in fat cells and creates satiety. Satiety is uh, letting you know you're full. Leptin signals to the brain that the body has had enough to eat, or satiety. Lack of sleep decreases leptin. So if you don't get enough sleep, you don't get enough signals that say you're full. So you keep eating. Cortisol is secreted by the adrenal glands. This is the stress hormone. If you don't get enough sleep, your body is stressed and it produces and releases more cortisol and that also increases body fat. Now all of these are important in moderation and when the timing is correct, but when it is lack of sleep that disrupts these circadian rhythms and these hormonal balances, that's when the issues occur. So here's an overview of improving sleep quality. No exercise that makes you sweat before sleep. Now I have to say, Intimacy, sexual intercourse is just fine because everyone sleeps pretty well after that. So that one doesn't count. But all your exercise should be done in the morning as well because then you, you boost your metabolism for the day through exercise rather than through caffeine. And then you can easily transition and slow down as the day progresses and as nightfall occurs. No caffeine after noon. It takes a while to get out of your system. So you need to make sure that you're not overdoing it with the caffeine. If you're having a hard time sleeping and you're heading over to Starbucks or your favorite coffee place, uh, that is probably a, a good portion of the reasoning. No alcohol three hours before bed. And a lot of people chuckle when I say this. Well, you can, you may be able to go to sleep uh, immediately following alcohol, but oftentimes you have a hard time staying asleep. And you also need to create a ritual, and a ritual needs to be true to you. So whatever allows you to be ritualistic, and have a system for getting deep quality sleep. If you think about anything or any, anyone who's really successful in what they do, they have a ritual. If you think about the person who, um, you know, before they serve a tennis ball or they throw a free throw or preparation for a test of any kind, there's a ritual. A ritual embeds a process in your body to where you're able to follow it and your body knows what to do next like autopilot. And if you do a ritual for sleep, the same thing occurs. Now it might be taking a bath, it might be reading, it might be doing a gentle yoga posture. Now it's not 
a full-on yoga program because it's going to be too stimulating before you go to sleep. But a couple of gentle postures, maybe a really easy walk where you're not sweating, but maybe you just walk down to the end of the street and back if you're in a, an environment where you feel that you can do that. But whatever the ritual is for you, some people light candles or burn incense or you know whatever, whatever it is, um, you can do that, but you have to have a ritual that prepares you for sleep. And this is something we haven't talked about too much yet, but it's really important, and that is to create a dark environment. The lenses of your eye detect the onset of darkness, or through the lenses of your eye, your brain detects the onset of darkness. And that's when it starts the cascade of hormonal changes. So if you do not have a dark environment, your body doesn't know to start shutting down and changing things over to the nighttime processes. So it's very important that as the night or as, as the evening wears on, you turn down the dimmer on the television uh, or turn down the, the brightness of the television. Um, and when you get in your room, there should be no television in your bedroom. Your bedroom's for a couple of things, and one of them is sleeping, and it is not for watching television. And you should have no bright lights of any kind. What if you know you can get light canceling blinds, and you can have a night light that only comes on as motion is detected, so you can see your way to the restroom. But a really, really dark environment allows deeper levels of sleep. So if you do not have this environment, that's step number one. It's the fastest, easiest thing you can do to make a real difference. And the reason I say remove electronics, there's two reasons for this. One, you don't need any kind of stimulus to detract from sleep. That's why you close your eyes to look inward and uh, focus on, on you rather than the outside world. So the other reason is because studies have shown that the slight electronic waves uh, of various types, depending on what the electronic device is, uh, they emit enough electrical activity to disrupt the secretion of melatonin and will reduce the depth of your sleep. This is true. And get off all medications possible. Again, I am not your medical doctor. I cannot tell you to do that. What I'm suggesting is that you talk to a doctor, perhaps see a naturopathic medical doctor for alternatives that are safe and effective and that have been proven for hundreds of years to work. Consider safe herbs and natural products. There's a lot of stuff out there that really works and works very well. Um, and then also, buy a quality bed. I've worked with the Select Comfort Sleep Number bed for a number of years and have really liked it. You need to find what works well for you. So I hope this has helped you improve the quality of your sleep. It's absolutely essential to your learning process, and that is why I have decided to put it near the beginning of this program because without the quality of sleep, nothing else can take place at the highest level, the level that we need to get the matrix minds. We're going to talk about dreaming coming up.